Great. <laughs> Well, I forgot that normally I like to do like a countdown because you'll see on your phone, um, there's a delay in all of this, but hi, Gab. What's hi. up? What's up, KG? Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation to invite me here to talk all the things. Well, I am so thrilled. So here's the thing with when you hang out with Kristen, you like, you just have this energy of, I can do anything. Like I'm going to make some moves. I'm going to be a take action, a say yes and figure it out. And so I know when we were chatting, I don't know, maybe like last week or the week before we're like, whenever you have a conversation with someone, you're like, this should be streamed. Like other people should be in on this action in on this energy. And so that's what we're doing, which I'm super, super stoked about. So I hope people like respond and hang out in the chat and like, yeah, come say hi and hang out with us. All the things. Yeah. We're streaming across like YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook and yeah, we're going to get some comments. And if you're here, let us know where you're dialing in from. But um, Gab, I just can't help myself. Tell us who you are for people who might not know, because you're amazing and I'm so <laughs> grateful for you. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hang out. What's up from Dallas, Texas team? Uh, my name is Gab Boche and I am a six time author, a two time TEDx speaker. Uh, I have co founded a company called The Purpose Company and Expert School. And I'm just really obsessed with helping people step into their purpose. So, a lot of what we get to do is help leaders, executive coaches, and decision makers really get clear on who they are and what they're supposed to do next. And so, um, and when I'm not doing all that, I'm hanging out with KG here, hanging out on all the social medias, uh, talking about making moves, making big moves, making decisions. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, um, I I came across you like a year and a half ago and knowing you for that past time has just changed my life. And so I'm so grateful to you and um, especially now and today and all of the things. I mean, it's just never a better moment to for all of us to step into our purpose. Um, it is it is the thing. I've got my purpose hat on. I got my purpose mural. I got my purpose cup, guys. When I say I am on brand, I am on brand here for it. Um, but yes, I mean, I know you and I wanted to jump on. And Kristen, for those of you guys from my community, because I know this is kind of like a collab, um, Kristen is incredible. She and I have gotten to work together for, yeah, I think over a year now on your book and on speaking and um, launching just your incredible, that's right, launching your incredible company. And um, it's just been so amazing seeing you take off and have this like global brand around what we internally like to say LFG. It's like the let's like say yes and figure it out. Let's freaking go. Um, like I think you call talk about like your big bold moves, like that that concept of of like motion forward, like motion activated success, guys. When I tell you, so many times people are like, how does Kristen do it? How's Kristen landing all this stuff and making all these moves? And that's what we're going to talk about because I don't know if anyone's like this, that you have someone in your life, your community, a friend, maybe someone you've been following or like cyber stalking a little bit. And you're like, how are they actually doing it? Um, that's essentially why we're having this conversation is like, Kristen's going to be like, this is how I actually do it. So um, for folks in my community who aren't familiar with you and your background and your awesome book, Be a Better Sales Leader and your awesome company and your awesome coaching products, like who are you and what are we going to jam about today? Yes, I love that. So thank you so much for being here with me. Um, like you said, I am a best-selling author. I am an international keynote speaker. Oh no, I lost you. Oh no. <laughs> Do you see that? Are you there? Gab, are you Let's there? Try. I'm back. I'm back. It was just very dramatic. It was being very dramatic. <laughs> um, and yeah, I help move the needle in my life and in others. And all of my superpowers come in the realm of sales and leadership and strategy, kind of with an umbrella over that on how to get out of our own way and overcome our imposter syndrome and just put one foot in front of the other. And so I know you're going to ask, like, 
how the heck did I find this out? Because so many people say to me, how do you get it all done? How? And honestly, I was thinking about it. Um, when I was in one of the most chaotic seasons of my life. So if you're in a chaotic season, write chaotic season in the chat so that we know you feel me. Um, I was chasing shiny objects. Let me say, this is something I've always done. I was a real estate agent, a beach body coach. I had a full-time job as a corporate salesperson. I had had just had my second kid and my first kid was still in diapers all at the same time. And in the busiest, most chaotic season of my life, I was like, something has to give. And I stumbled upon a system to like streamline everything and literally just take out the chaos, take out like this whole idea that I have to be something to everyone and get really good tunnel vision focus on just one thing, right? This starts to sound familiar then, right? One thing. I know one book you recommended to me was the one thing. And it's so true that if you lean in, right, which is another book, Sheryl Sandberg, like lean in, if you lean in to doing one thing and foregoing this concept of multitasking, it's really um, part of what just transformed and revolutionized me, who you know now today as LFG girl and say yes and figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it's, it's one of those things like when you meet people, fam, and someone has a message, the first thing that you have to look at is are they living that message? Because a lot of times, especially in this like pop up coach world where people are like, let's like post something really positive and happy or inspirational, but their life is inconsistent. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? You're like, I don't really think you read the thing that you just posted. <laughs> like, I think that was like either a different you or from somewhere else. And what I'm telling you guys, like Kristen is consistent. Like she is the message of say yes and figure it out. Um, I, I mean it. And that's what I think is so fun about her message. And, and even just like you getting into coaching, because I think you came about this probably from a place that I came about and from a lot of other successful coaches is, is like creating for other people what you created for yourself. Like, I'm sure if someone could have come around and given you like a superpower or fairy dust to avoid all of the crapola that you get stuck with, like you probably would have been like, I'll take two. But that's not what happened. Like instead, you actually created a system, which I think is so stinking cool. Like it's so cool um, to be able to overcome the the doubt demons. Like I talk about so much, like in your head. So what, like, what inspired you to get to this place where you didn't just use it for yourself selfishly? Um, just why are you now sharing it with us, Kristen? Like why why share it with the world? Oh yeah, so good because I think when I took a step back, for me, the pain, the cost of not figuring out how to get ahead, how to even get afloat, let alone get ahead, yeah. <laughs> right? I was sinking in all sense of the words. And I know that kind of the same reason why I wrote Be a Better Sales Leader is if I could help just one other person and teach them my system of say yes and figure it out, if I could inspire others who have bought all these coaching programs and they're sitting on a bunch of great ideas, but they don't know how to move them forward. Mm -hmm. If I could help one person, it will all be worth it. And I think for me, what inspired me to share was I know the real pain, this like real honest to goodness, like this hurts so bad, I can't move forward. And when I thought I had finally got it figured out, there's a wasp in my office, by the way. So like we are, we are officially on wasp watch, wasp watch. <laughs> should I leave my door open or should I shut it for the live? No, I'm going to leave it open. Never again. Rookie mistake. Um, but the cost of me not figuring out April 17th of 2023, it's almost been a year. I lost my job and my world fell apart. And I just knew I put one foot in front of the other and I followed my system and it, it changed my life. And so that's my inspiration is to help others because you know, there's a philosophy that goes <laughs> give others and you, I mean, even though you'll receive 10 X more, but like give, I can't give enough. I give, give, give. And I learned that from some of the best where it's like, 
Um, what are the strategies I have? What are the ninja hacks I use? And how can I give that all away for free? Yeah. Well, and it's um, and it's not just the fact that you have something that you can package, but you actually have a process, which I think is so amazing because um, and this is like me, you know, talking to people on the side, like pay attention to the process that people say that they have, because some people will try to sell results. Some people will, will do like before and afters. Like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm a sucker for some QVC. Like I don't have cable anymore. Cause if not, I will just be hanging out on QVC and I won't even buy stuff. Like I'm not even into little dolls or like the hand creams. Like I, I have self-control, but I'm just telling, I love I love like the before and afters. I can't get over it. It's like the gray, my life was horrible. I couldn't open this Tupperware. And then like the brightly colored, my life is amazing. I can finally feel bright. Like that's the kind of before and after that um, you want to see whenever you're working with someone or learning from someone or honestly just like being in orbit, like being around people who are in the business of transformation. And what you need to pay attention to is not just the before and after, but you want to pay attention to what's the process. How do you get from A to B, because if that process, number one, didn't work for the person teaching them, like it's probably not gonna work for you. And number two, isn't repeatable and resonates with you, then it's not gonna work for you either. So um, you have a process. It's something like say yes and figure out, like you have a paradigm that you've walked me through when you told me, I was like, this is like bananas, like this is amazing. Like, can you please talk more about that process? I know, I love it. Who doesn't want somebody in their back corner always encouraging you to say, you know, keep going, keep sharing more. And so I'm really honored or humbled that you would say that. Yes. It's like my system is the fastest way to X to do anything that X is anything, grow your business or finally launch your own business, right? Finally make some TEDx applications. It could be like, I find that so often after talking to hundreds of people about what their problems are, about the time it's cost, the money it's cost, the spousal agreement, disagreements that they've had. The pain is so deep. And how can we give a system to everyone that's like, if you do this, then this will happen. And it's the outcome that you're looking for. It's the result. It's like, oh my gosh, yes, they accepted my application or now I'm speaking on a stage or I finally put on paper this book that had been in my head for so many years, right? Um, or I, I'm a salesperson and I got out of my own way and made cold calls and whatever that looks like in today's world. And that's the coolest thing about the system is that it's cross like almost anything that somebody's doing because it's a system to taking action and it's a system to getting out of your own ways. That's amazing. So what, um, yeah, when you're talking about a system, cause that's what it all comes down to is, is it something that can scale something that can, can grow? Like what types of problems do, would you say that this system could apply to? I mean, I know you talked a little bit about, um, briefly about things like applying it in your life, your business, you wanting to start your own company. Um, but what's a specific problem that you've applied it in your own life? And then what happened because of that? Yeah, I mean, I think let's give a couple examples because um, have you ever, my grandfather was a driver's ed teacher. So like driver's ed, like teaching, well, in the States, like 16 year olds, how to drive, 15 year olds, how to drive. And isn't it funny, like when you learn to drive, um, it's so, it's so many things happening all at once. It's, I have to keep my hands at 10 and two. Um, I can't push the gas pedal too hard because we don't realize that the foot barely goes on the gas pedal, or I have to turn around and look at my blind spots and by making some big grandiose gesture. I mean, this was how, my experience, maybe because it was my grandfather. Um, and all of a sudden, as you learn how to do something, it becomes more of a repeatable process. Mm -hmm. And you're all of a sudden driving from your house to the mall and you forgot how you even got there because it becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. And that is the beauty of this system is that once you learn the steps to the system, it really helps take you from A to Z on autopilot mm -hmm. in the best way possible because you don't have to think harder. So mm -hmm. when I was working with one of my clients and she had these big goals, right? So one of my 
clients was looking to write their own book. And since I had written a book and I had a framework and she had a framework and she was, I was coaching her on um, the steps to take to, you know, write the book and make sure it hits all the right marks on the bestseller list. We applied the framework so that she could not only write the book, but actually accomplish the goal in the time that it took her to do that. I would say another one of my clients is, was a corporation and they really needed to establish or like get over this fear that they had among the leadership team that their goals weren't big enough and that they were falling behind from their competitors. Mm -hmm. Because whether you run a business or whether you're on, on, on your bed at night looking at Instagram, comparison is like truly the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, it's learning the strategies to put on, like to, to know how to block things that aren't serving you mm -hmm. and to put one foot in front of the other, no matter your goals being big or small, no matter your company needing to like redefine itself. Like mm -hmm. what are, when was the last time this company looked at continuous learning as a goal? Like, are you feeding your leaders and are you feeding your team with knowledge and strategies that are actually going to move the needle? Mm -hmm. um, versus worrying about comparing yourselves to your competitors. So I think these are two examples of helping an individual versus helping a corporation with this system. Mm, that's so cool. And, and I think, um, yeah, you're already giving me like so many ideas of like, um, I think just the power of initiative is super interesting because it's one of those things that is, it's just really fascinating to me right now. Like in my own personal study, it's like, why do we not do the things that we know what, that we should like anybody in the chat, like feel that way. You're like, I know I should like, what's the thing that you know you should be doing. It's okay. We're all friends here. Like, you know, like finally go to the gym. Like that's me. Like, yeah. or like finally, you know, stop doing that thing or start doing that thing. Like, or maybe it's write the book or maybe it's, um, you know, call that person back or, you know, all of those things. Like, like the thing is that we all know that initiative is the engine of success. We all know it. Like we all know that taking action is the determinative trait of people who are successful. Like the top people that we look up to, whoever that is for you and whatever industry that is to you, it's because they took action. And yet so many times we're stopped by inaction for a number of reasons. And so what does that look like for you, Kristen? Like when you look at people and whatever you're working with people or maybe in your own life, like what is actually stopping people from taking action and how can they identify it? Yeah, I think that's great because when in April 17th of 2023, when I received devastating news that I was no longer going to be employed where I was, um, speaking of action, one story I love to tell because it really resonates is I had a choice. Did I take a nap on the couch? Because holy cow, like what just happened to me, right? Do I binge watch a show on TV or eat a box of cookies? I mean, that's like my jam, right? Or do I seek comfort? It's like how as humans we seek comfort. So do I seek comfort in action? Mm -hmm. And I think so often we choose the easier way not working out because I didn't work out yesterday, but you kind of alluded to this at the beginning, movement creates momentum. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is learn that there's a reward every single time we put one foot in front of the other. And so the system helps people with the clarity and the focus. And here's a big one. And I know you love this. It's the conviction. Mm -hmm. It's really that like, Confidence comes to, right? Why does this person have so much confidence over that person? It's the conviction. It's the real belief that I know that me losing my job isn't, doesn't define who I am. It's not what happens to me. It's what happens for me. And mm -hmm. having a system, because life happens, chaos is all around us. There was a war, a recession, inflation, like you name it, a pandemic, right? Right. So having a system to know that no matter our circumstances in our home or our work life, how do I keep putting one foot in front of the other to gain the clarity, to have resilience in order to pick ourselves back up, right? And then to really get after any goal that we set, no matter how big 
or how small? Like mm -hmm. the real question back is, are you willing to take just a little bit of action every day? Instead of, I have to go to the gym, which means I have to look cute, right? Some people are like, I have to look cute to go to the gym. Or I have to get in my car and drive a half a mile or 15 miles, like whatever. Like, how do you eliminate the complication of it? How do you go on one walk around your block? One walk. How do you walk to the end of your street and back? Sometimes I test myself and walk, I walk barefoot and I'm like, that's not weird because barefoot running is all the rage, right? I feel weird because I'm in my work clothes barefoot, but like at the end of the day, it's like, how do you uncomplicate what we as humans tend to overcomplicate? Yeah. And I think what happens in that moment, that decision of, am I going to make the small step or zero step? is I think that's the biggest differentiation, especially for those of us who are like type A, like get it all done. We have to have 100% effort to get 100% result. Everything's gotta be perfect. We gotta look cute, feel cute. All the things gotta be cute. Like I get it, like as a recovering type A perfectionist. Hi, I'm here, nice to see you. Um, what you're saying, Kristen, so resonates because it is the action takers that are the purpose makers. And so when that moment for you came that you said, hey, I have a choice. I can either sit back and step back or I can step forward and actually do something, which guys, I'm just telling you, it's uncomfortable. Like it's totally uncomfortable. There's something that's gonna go on your body, your mind, whatever that, that forward motion is making you do. Ask that person out, apply for that job, start that company, post that thing, whatever it is, there's going to be something because you're in your head, your mind, your body, your gut, that's like, this is crazy, this is scary. But it, all it's saying is this is new. And so what are some of the other things that I think people as they um, get into a space of saying yes and figuring it out, what should they prepare for? Because I think this is something we don't talk enough about, which is prepare for the setback challenge and discouragement because it's coming. If you know what's happening, then you're like, oh, this is normal. But if no one prepares you, like, like if I just started working out again. And so like, I'm your girl is sore. Okay. I was doing like sled pushes yesterday. I'm like in it. Okay. And I, if, so if I didn't know that I would be sore after the types of workouts I was doing, I think I'm broken. I'd be like, that's, it's a sign. Like actually my body is telling me to rest and relax and never work out again. Like it hurts when I push on these little tiny muscles. Like this is no, this is bad news. Barely. Like I shouldn't do this. But because I'm prepared and I know what's happening in my muscles and where the lactic acid's coming from and how to get rid of it and that it's not going to last forever, now I'm willing to go back to the gym because I know it's just part of the process. So what are some of the things that people can anticipate when they're getting into that zone of saying yes and figuring it out? Yes, so good. Because I think so much of what you're touching on is this concept of resilience, also known as grit, also known as imposter syndrome also known as like failure, <laughs> like flat out failure. Um, because yeah, there's so much that people can resonate with. And the health thing is a really great analogy. But in general, like say yes and figure it out. You need a community to support you, somebody to WhatsApp, somebody to Voxer or text or call and say, oh my gosh, this thing is happening because listen, you're going to finally pull the plug. Maybe your thing, like you mentioned, is posting once on LinkedIn because you're trying to grow your business. You're trying, you want to write your book. You want to promote yourself as a keynote speaker. You, you want to launch your business, right? Maybe, maybe it's posting once and you post once and you feel really good about it, but it took a lot of days to write that one post, right? So there's strategies to writing that post faster because once you know that in this example, the post is only going to live for a very short amount of time and like only a few people, thanks to the algorithm, are even going to see it. And here's the bigger problem. Somebody is going to comment on that post directly or in your inbox to say, man, you always post selfies. <laughs> and they're going to instantly make you doubt your post and any future posts that you make. And that stuff happens to all of us. So often I'm coaching a group of people in my behind the scenes community and they're like, oh my gosh, like I, I didn't know that this was normal. I didn't know that everybody else was experiencing this exact same thing. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the beauty of a community or a mentor that, you know, you can trust to, to guide you. It's like, oh shoot, 
I made this great post. It took me a little longer. I know it should have, but I'm so proud of myself. I finally got it out. And then somebody's hating on it. But people are coming to it from their own perspective. As somebody, um, Dr. Andrea Vitz, who is an emotional sobriety expert, who she talks about, like, it's everyone is reacting to life from their own layers of filters, filtering that have gathered up. And the point is, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. Their comment on whatever it was, they didn't like the color of the sky or the way you wrote the text or that looks like it was AI. It, it, <laughs> Maybe these are all comments. <laughs> so you have to have the strategies in your back pocket to persevere yeah. because resilience and perseverance, like they go hand in hand. And that's, I don't know, 70, 80 percent mm -hmm. of the battle is picking yourself back up and keep going forward, failing forward. Yeah, but it's those daily decisions, man. And it's that's the kind of stuff. Why do we teach this stuff in school? That it's like, hey, guess what? Kids, next generation leaders, teacher presidents, you're going to have to do the stuff that you don't want to do. And it's not fun and it's going to suck and you're going to be discouraged. But you have a choice to either do it or do nothing. And, and I think those critical moments, um, we hate them in our own lives, but we revere them in others. I can look at you, Kristen, and be like, that's amazing that you made that decision. Or you can say that to me on, in, on, on my hard days that I step back up. And we can say that to people that we love and respect. And we love watching movies of people having that resilience factor. And yet I think so oftentimes we don't um, encourage ourselves in those moments to be our own heroes, to be like, hey, this is actually a characteristic. This is a quality that I love. I'm obsessed with with other people. Like I love a good marvel movie i love a good superhero movie and and like that they those are all based off of just human traits like people doing crazy amazing things like i love a good documentary of like oh my gosh they were able to like come back and like win the olympics and i'm like sobbing i'm like that's amazing but i have that same resilience i have that same lfg energy inside of me i have that same say yes and figure it out it's just how do you tap into it yes yeah, so I would love to make an invitation, actually, yes. to, anybody, to anybody listening. And like, maybe you can hang out with us, Gab. So um, first, write a tick. If you're watching this live or on the replay, write a tick mark, just like a hashtag, down for any one of these things that based on this conversation, let me try to rattle some off. You fill in the blanks of like what people might be looking for. Like if you're saying, yes, like I need this. Like, are you looking for more clarity? Are you looking for something around resilience or grit? Or you didn't know it was called that, but like you just need a kick in your butt. Like you need, you need what, what are they called? Sled pulls? They, I think you're pushing. Like, are you yeah. like, are you pushing or pulling? I did both. Yes. <laughs> like a little bit of grit, a little bit of resistance. Write a hashtag down if you're wanting to align your career with your life or your life with your career. Write a hashtag down if you're looking for community or if you would benefit from support or if you're ready to feel empowered or achieve like these goals that you know are deep inside you, this conviction that you have. Right. And then let us know in the chat how many tick marks you have. I mean, I see people saying three tick marks, two tick marks, one tick mark. I mean, this is amazing. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you have if any of this resonates with you, if you're like, what do I do next? How do I how do I geek out more on this? Um, I would love to invite you to a four hour live masterclass where I am just going to give it all away. And Gab, is it okay if you come hang out in this masterclass and like be part oh, of it? Oh, absolutely. Let's do it. Yes. Okay. So say yes and figure it out.com. Um, it's on April 27th. It's a Saturday. Like, come on now, right? Um, so it, I'll go live for four hours of like next level ninja content. And I'm so grateful, Gab, that you are joining us. And also Dr. Andrea Vitz, who is a specialist in this concept of emotional sobriety. I mean, I'm gonna have her on live too. So let us know in the chat if you wanna have a live with Andrea, Dr. Andrea, because one, I don't know if you know this Gab, but like the first time I talked to her was when I was um, in your office, like last fall 
one, like personally, like on a real, like help me already, like type level, one session with Andrea changed my life. Like it is that good. Um, so let's have this, let's have this masterclass on Saturday, April 27th. And I think I want to do something really cool where it's totally free. Like this masterclass is like mega free. So you don't have to do anything except clear your calendars, get care for your kids. Like I'm going to right? make sure, make sure somebody else can watch your kids for a few hours or have them come along. Um, and if you want to upgrade to a VIP experience, then you'll get to hang out with me for an hour earlier and get access to a private Facebook group. And we'll just, have answer all the questions in that VIP experience. And I'll give you a few extra giveaways. How does that sound? I love it. And so you said it's say yes and figure it out.com. Yes. Is that guys, this is like, I'm a domain person. That is like, like to my heart. Like that's like the coolest domain ever. That's amazing. Say yes and figure it out.com. Go to it. That's so good. I know. Yes. You know, the funny thing is because like, it's like be a better sales leader.com, which is the name of my book and the domain for my book. I mean, nothing's really there, but go check it out. And it's a mouthful say yes and figure it out.com. But it kind of just like rolls off the tongue. It's so like, I'm here to forget. It. I'm here for it. Yeah. So this masterclass is right for entrepreneurs or executives or professionals who are not just looking for these incremental improvements. You're not looking for like a raw, raw, you know, you'll get some inspiration. We'll definitely motivate you, but like you're ready for some actionable strategies to like take some major leaps in your personal and professional lives. Like, can we do that for them? You can do that. Yes. Awesome. All right. Okay. Well, what else? Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, what? I love it. Well, guys, I'm super excited. I hope you guys join me, join us um, to have just a deeper discussion because um, if this is something that you're like, you know, there's stuff in my life I'm not taking action on that I need to, this is like a decision making boot camp. Okay. This is like, let's get you and your cute little brain out of your way and into a place where you're actually taking action on the stuff that you want to take action on. So, um, and we're not just going to talk about business stuff. We'll talk about life stuff. We'll talk about relationship stuff because there's a through line like odds are you're not making a decision in a lot of areas in your life because you don't know what direction that you're going into and that's what her whole system is is really making sure that you know where you're going how to get started and being okay with making the wrong decision <gasps> i said it yes i'm gonna say it but again but like truly it's okay to make the wrong decision because you can course correct later so I'm sure you're going to talk way more about that. And that's like my favorite thing to jam on is like decision management, because so many times we don't make a decision because we're waiting for the perfect one, but that is not the recipe for success. So um, if you're like, I just need someone to kick me in the butt, like I feel stuck. I feel like I've been like living Groundhog's Day. Like I just need to like get moving, get going. Then you got to sign up and hang out with us. It's a Saturday. It's like the funnest thing ever. Like what else are you going to do? This is like, the best thing that you could do is hang out with us. Yes. I love it. I love it. It's the thing like indecision is the wrong decision, not taking action. Like it really is true that like movement creates momentum and we can start celebrating even the wrong decision. We can celebrate the wrong decision, like marinate on that for a second, because I actually made a decision and I took a step forward. And now I have the chance to course correct and do, you know, something else I think might work. So I love it, Gab. Thank you so much. This is going to be so, so fun. fun. <laughs> All 